So we talked a lot about uh, diversity of data, and you know, in the last couple of episodes, we've had with several of our uh, a patient advocate, uh, Joan, with uh, with uh, former, he's currently president of ISPOR and former uh, president or CEO of Cadiff, uh, Brian, talked a lot about health equity, right? This concept of uh, being able to really serve like uh, the entire Canadian population, as you guys suggested. And one component of that is, uh, is, is diversity, right? Surin that you mentioned to make sure that data from everyone is in, in incorporated in the models or the work that you do. H- how do you, how do you think about ensuring that? Do you, do you have your, your graduate students make sure that the data that's incorporated in their models is diverse? Like, from, I guess from a pragmatic level, how do you do that yourself? And then how do you suggest the community to, to do that, to make sure that the data set is diverse and not run into the same issues we ran into with like the human, human genome project, where it's like, it's like 95%, uh, you know, of a, a really, very small subset of the, the population. Yeah. So uh, since we, we work in a public hospital um, uh, and have very good collaboration with the oncologists that serve this community that we live in right now. So having a, having a broad um, data set with patients that have, say, had a neck cancer, as an example, uh, we know that we are capturing every single patient coming in. So any patient coming in to, um, to our clinics who both provided consent, so this are uh, prospective, but also retrospectively, if we, we go back in time, we will capture um, patients from our community that have been treated with us. Um, so, and head and neck is, is a, you know, we have both male and female populations here in this disease. Um, and then to ensure that we work on diseases that are both female and male, obviously we work on prostate cancer, but also gynecological cancers. Um, but I think in Canada, so working at a, at a publicly funded hospital uh, and uh, going back in time, say, uh, looking at patient data from uh, early, say, 2000 until now, you will capture most of the patients who have had cancer in treated in our hospital during this time. Um, so, and, and patient get cancer from all socioeconomic groups. Uh, and and by, by just doing that, you, you ensure that uh, you have a diverse population that have been treated in your own little hospital. However, also genetically, if you would like to capture patients um, from different genetic pools, for example, you would like to uh, collaborate with other provinces, other countries. So it's not socioeconomically, we know that we capture most of the patients in our uptake area, in the, you know, treated at McGill University Health Center and the Jewish General Hospital, which is which are many McGill's teaching hospitals. Uh, we do make sure to um, uh, characterize the you know the patient population itself. Uh, male, female population in, in the subset of patients that we, we look at. Um, and by having, um, we, we do our, we are mindful of both doing research on male disease, specific male diseases versus female uh, cancers and so on. But we are also aware that these might be genetically um, uh, not very diverse populations at some, sometimes. So it would be good to collaborate with other hospitals across Canada and also internationally uh, to be able to be diverse. Right now, we are using some public data sets uh, from U.S., um, adding to our um, uh, our data and, and diversifying it. But uh, we do think about this, and, and always before they start even developing models, the students need to go through the data in detail uh, and they need to understand their data. They need to know um, from which populations they are from uh, and so on. So we have the data that we have, but we try to understand the data and understand all the intricacies of um, both when it comes to gender, age, because we, we, you know, uh, age is very important as well to be able to um, include diversity in age, socioeconomic background, um, gen- genomic uh, differences between the patients and so on. 
but there is so much we can do. You know, we have the population of patients that we have here. So eventually when we have a pan-Canadian database, it would be then also nice to, um, to collaborate with rest of Canada. For our GI projects, we, are, we, are, we have data from three big centers in Quebec um, as our training data set. And we, we have uh, um, a Canadian um, data set as a testing set. So that is very good. We have up to 15,000 patients there which is very nice and the models we have we are developed there hopefully are more generalizable because they are trained on a very big uh, set of data um, both across Quebec but also they work very well with this Canadian test the, the test that comes from a, another Canadian center so ideally this is the the numbers that we would like to have say 15 15 20 thousand patients from different hospitals um, hopefully from different genetic pools um, and if the model works and the testing set from another province, then we are happy uh, with the model um, and can, with a good conscience, give the model to other centers um, to test on their, their data as well.